Hello, welcome to Writing Quest. My name is Brendan Pugh, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about Words of Radiance, which is book two in the Stormlight Archive. I'm going to give you five things I like and five things I didn't like. Here we go. Huzzah! Okay, we're talking about the Stormlight Archive Words of Radiance. Uh, to start off, generally, uh, this will be a no-spoilers review, but generally, I love this book. This is one of my favorite ones so far. Um, I finished two. I'm working on the third one. I'm about uh, not quite halfway through the third one, but I'm working on the third one, which I can't really give a definitive on the third one yet, obviously, because I haven't finished it. But the second one, I loved. I loved, I loved, I loved. And so it made it really hard to come up with five things I didn't like. So I did. I found them, but it took me a while. So... As per usual with the book reviews, we're going to do five things I liked and five things I didn't like, and we're going to start with what I didn't like first, and we'll end on a good note. So, here we go. Number one, reveals at the end. Now, this is a little bit of a double-edged sword here, because uh, I, I didn't dislike the reveals. Um, I liked the reveals, I liked all the things that happened. What I disliked was, like, there was so many. It just keep kept happening. There kept being more reveals, kept being another reveal. And by the end of that, as I was reading it, you know, when I got to the last few ones, I was kind of over it. I was like, okay, like, come on, here we go. Again, it's kind of weird because I liked all of the reveals and I liked all the information that was learned in them. But for some reason, I just felt like maybe it could have been spread out in a different way or done. I don't really know how it would have been done differently, but done differently somehow because it it made the ending kind of feel like I was really like, okay, I really want to be done with this. Like, let's get to the end. So definitely the amount of reveals at the end uh, wasn't exactly my favorite. However, I did like all the reveals. Number four, the Moash reveal. Now, I'm not going to spoil what it is, but there is some revelations around the character Moash, and I personally wasn't a big fan of them. Um, I, obviously, I'm not going to go into any detail on them, but as we found out some parts of the story and as things were revealed about Moash's character, I just kind of found myself being like, huh, that was it? Like, that was the only thing so far. Now, of course, it's early in the series and we could be getting into maybe his character develops further as we go uh, into the next couple of books. But for this particular book, when I found out the reveals um, about his character and the revelations about his past, I was underwhelmed about those particular things. That being said, Moash is at the moment a pretty relatively minor character. He's not too big of a deal. He, he plays a kind of a pivotal role, a pivotal role in this book. Um, but I just found that the reveals about his character were seemed a little weak to me um, and weren't exactly what I really liked. I wasn't really my cup of I guess is what you could say. Number three, Shallan sneaking around. Now in this book, uh, you really start getting into what's going on with the magic and the history and the lore and everything. And Shallan does a lot of sneaking around in this one. And it kind of felt, um, I don't know. I don't even know what I disliked about it. It just kind of like wasn't, this wasn't jiving with me. It was not my favorite part of the story. Um, she, it's, I don't know. I don't know if it seemed out of character for her. Maybe that will change for me as I continue reading, but it just wasn't my favorite. Same with the Moash reveals. Um, that following that storyline was probably the most boring for me personally to read. Now, it could be some for someone else. It could be a really great storyline for them to read. But for me personally, um, I, I was just not like every time I got to a ne the next thing with Shallan, I was kind of like, OK, I'm kind of over it, basically. Number four, Kaladin's age. Now, I'm going to this is minor, minor spoilers, not really a big deal, basically at all. Um, when he reveals how old Kaladin actually is, it was a, very surprising to me. Um, he's a lot younger than you think he is. And as I was reading the story from the first book to this one, he does not seem like he's that young of a character. So it was kind of um, when I read and like what his age is and how old he is. And then based on how I pictured him in my head from the last, you know, the first book and then the first like half of the second book. I, um, I It just seemed off. I was like, oh, that doesn't seem right. He should be a little bit older. I wasn't thinking of him as being like 
you know, not in his 50s or 60s like an old person, but I certainly wasn't thinking as young as he actually is and what that is in the book. And so that was a little bit like that. It what I what I found out reading the book and what I had pictured in my head were not the same. So that was a little jarring for me. And number two, Yasna's story. I'm not going to say anything about it other than uh, because I really don't want to spoil it. There's a lot to it, but I just was kind of meh. Um, I was, you know, similar to the Moash story and similar to Shalon's story through the thing. It, it sounds like, you know, it's funny as I'm saying this, it sounds like I dislike the book. I don't. It's just these couple of things. And these things aren't bad things, but the her particular story was not, um, it was fairly predictable for me and it was not very um, engaging. So similar to Shalon's story, what happened with Moash, their present day stories didn't really... Um, engage me that much. All right, we're going to go into the five things I did like about this story. And like I said, this one is one of my favorites for sure. Might be one of my favorite fantasy books I've read of all. Um, I really liked it a lot. And so we're going to get into the five things that I liked the most about it. Here we go. Number one, Adolin Dueling. In this book, we get a lot more of Adolin Dueling. They talk about him doing that in the first book. Um, he, that gets talked about. And he does maybe a little bit of it. But in this one, he really gets let off the leash to do that and the scenes about it are great. There's a few of them that made me laugh out loud. Um, it was a really cool character exploration of him. And I was really, um, as much as I disliked Shallan's story and some of those other ones, I really liked this story. I loved the arc of it. I loved how we were able to see him and how good he is at certain things and then where his you know, faults in his armor were as it is. And so, I really liked those scenes. I really liked this whole story around it, and I thought it was a really great part of the story. Number two, the Spren. So in this book, you get more information and it dives really deep into the Spren and what they are and what happens, and holy crap, was I not expecting any of it. I was totally floored by the whole thing throughout the whole book, everything that happens. And then once you get towards the end, I was just completely blown away. Um, and not only was I blown away because of how great and cool it is, I was blown away because I didn't even expect or see it coming. I had no idea. Um, I've done. I've tried to do a really good job of avoiding spoilers for this um, story in general. And so I really had no idea. I didn't guess it. I couldn't figure it out. Like I would, there's no, maybe if I went back and reread, maybe there's some things that I missed that would have led me to believe, you know, or figure out what they are. But man, it was cool. The way that it came about in the story felt so natural and so real. And everything about it was just, that was probably my favorite part of the whole book. Number three. So as much as I didn't really like Shallan's present day story in the book, her backstory is incredible. So in the first book, you know, all the flashbacks follow Kaladin. So in this book, all the flashbacks follow Shallan. And her backstory was so cool. And I couldn't really, like at first, I was kind of bored by it. Like kind of everything with Shallan in the beginning, I was pretty bored with, including flashbacks. But the more that went on, I really liked the flashbacks a lot. And then all of a sudden you get to the end where things get revealed about what happened to her and who she is and everything with her family. It was really great. It was great storytelling and it was great storytelling that gave the character, it really um, proved her motivations and it showed like why her motivations are the way they are. And it was a really, really cool element to the story that had some shocking moments even. I was pretty shocked about some things and um, it, not quite as much as the Spren stuff. Like I'd kind of worked out some, maybe they worked it out, but I had a little hunches about what it was. But um, her backstory in particular actually made me be more okay with not liking her present day story. So Shalon's backstory, definitely one of the highlights. Number four, there's a scene where Kaladin defends a certain someone. And I'm not going to say who it is because I don't, I really don't want to give any spoilers because it's really great. But when you get to the scene in the book, you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, the fight scene with Kaladin and how it all came about gave me chills. I was, as I was reading it, um, I was building up to it and the fight scene kind of starts. And as the fight scenes kept going, I could not stop reading. This was one of the, I, I generally don't have an issue with being able to put a book down. Like I'm okay to put something down and put it away and take a break. But that, when I got to that scene, I had to finish 
the whole thing. I could not stop reading it. It was incredible. And um, the how it flowed, everything about it, the story that was revealed through it was really great. And so, again, I'm not going to say who it is because I really don't want to give it away, but he has a fight scene where he's defending someone. And man, it is just super cool. Super cool. And number five, the last thing on our top five list is the battle scenes. All of the battle scenes, especially all of the ones towards the end, are epic. They're epic because they're grand in scale. They're epic because there's so many characters involved and so many different things going on. They're balanced perfectly, but they're also epic because of all of the story that comes through and gets told through the battle scenes, how things conclude, how, I mean, literally everything about the battle scenes especially the battle scenes in the last third is is brilliant it's some of the best writing um, i've ever read in a fantasy series it's done super super well and so i really um i i would say that's one of my best highlights is that how it all weaves together with all the different characters the fight scenes and it's not just that they're fight scenes and they're action-packed it's how the story weaves into them is just incredible so definitely some of the best writing for sure that i've read in a while Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and helps out the channel, helps it grow, helps it reach more people. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Writing Quest. Huzzah!